The Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Blockchain Super Conference is coming to Dallas, Texas, February 16, 17, and 18 in 2018. If you know of a better way to get the latest insider knowledge about crypto, to hear directly from the top minds in this field, to interact personally with 800 fellow crypto lovers, hodlers, investors, miners, traders, developers, and founders, then I'd like to hear about it. If you don't, then you don't want to miss out. Register today for the Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Blockchain Super Conference. Go to BitcoinSuperConference.com and register today as a super early bird to get the lowest rates on tickets and hotel rooms. That's BitcoinSuperConference.com. Welcome to Almost Here, Round the Corner of Future Technology podcast with Richard Jacobs. Future technologies poised to transform our lives for better or worse are the focus of this podcast. Almost Here means these technologies are now here and starting to be used. We're just around the corner from Bitcoin to artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more. Welcome everyone to the Future Tech Podcast. My name is Josh Thomas, and I'm here with Thomas Tybon from Repux. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everyone. Hello, Josh. Glad to have you on here. Uh, and so, as I understand it, uh, Repux is a blockchain-based data marketplace for small to medium businesses. Tell me a little bit about what that means and uh, what your project is doing. Sure. Thanks for, for uh, having me here, Josh. So, uh, you're right, it's a blockchain-based uh, data marketplace for, for small and medium businesses in the sense that uh, it helps them utilize the, the data which they have with them currently and uh, help them with the usage of the centralized application to uh, make a conclusions out of those data with the help of developers, right? Okay. The, the businesses can, uh, you know, in, in nowadays the businesses manufacture tremendous amount of data, right? And uh, what we see is that they remain untouched in the uh, databases of the, for example, uh, SaaS products or in MySQLs and, and so forth. So what we see a usage for that is that first they can be simply sold on a platform, uh, on, on Repux platform, and they can deliver an extra money for that. Um, but what's more important is that those data can be uh, utilized by the developers or AI-driven um, people, machine learning uh, scientists, and they can deliver actionable insights uh, based on those data back to SMBs. And, and that's how this whole ecosystem can strive in order to, uh, to help those uh, businesses flourish over time. Okay, and so uh, you would say that uh, let's let's see if we can find a uh, a use case as an example. Uh, would this be appropriate for an e-commerce business as an example? That that I would say that's uh, my favorite one uh, because of my background, which is heavily related to it to the e-commerce thing. So that, that that's a very good um, uh, use case because. If you take a look on all of those online stores based on Shopify, for example, or if you take a look on those uh, merchants who are using marketplaces like Amazon for for making the online sales, they uh, they they have a kind they have some kind of struggles in a sense to uh, expand their businesses because they need to compete with with really big guys. And they are left alone with um, how to, how exactly they can compete, what exactly needs to be done in order to flourish. So here is the use case that those data which they already have with um, transactional one uh, may be used by uh, AI developers, for example, or other subject matter experts, and they can use those data and deliver an insights to this online seller what he exactly needs to do in order to expand the business and, and sell more or uh, make more money out of the stock school, which which uh, he already have with uh, with him, right? But there may, have, there may be a tremendous amount of different examples. Like we, ha- we, we had a very interesting conversation with uh, data developers about the uh, data related to pollution, for example, right? This is a challenge in, in Krakow City when I leave, and then this data are very uh, interesting for um, data-driven people to analyze what what we can do actually to 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 fight this pollution in our uh, cities. So 
there there may be a really interesting uh, numbers of uh, examples when data are being uh, not utilized properly, even if they are sitting in some databases, right? So let me ask you a follow-up question for this. Um, in relation to big data, if you will, uh, where you know Facebook is uh, tying into all of these different you know, huge caches of, of data that they've collected on people over the years. And they're using that to make more intelligent decisions about where to place advertisements and that sort of thing. How does uh, your data marketplace uh, relate to something like that? Um, I would say that uh, the idea behind Repox is, is not related to make, uh, to, to push more ads on the people, right? Just to clarify, I, I'm not necessarily saying that you're you're using this to put proper ad placement, and that's what Facebook does. But but they are using uh, large sources of data in order to make more intelligent business decisions. And uh, is that something? Is that what your data marketplace facilitates as well? Whether it's for advertisements or, or some other decision? Yeah, the the, the first part. Uh, I mean, uh, we we want to. Um, Build the place where the whole ecosystem for the developers and, and businesses where this big data can be actually utilized in a favor of those of the other part of the market because the uh, big data market is constructed in a way that the the, uh, the the leaders takes it all so if you know Facebook Google and all of the big guys they already have those data and they are able to uh, to analyze them and to, to act on them. But the, the rest of the market, um, those small businesses, they are left alone with this. So, so we want to combine all of those uh, raw data sets and make them available for, for sale and for purchase uh, to those big data people uh, in order to, um, to help those small guys as well in the very same way as big guys benefiting out of this big data industry. And so uh, and we're going back from our e-commerce example earlier, uh, this is, uh, give me an example of, of how a company like that would, uh, would interact with you. Would, are they, are they signing up with a, a subscription or is it a pay per use? And, uh, you know, how does, how does that work? Sure. So, so, uh, thanks to the, uh, plugin for the platform, we can take Shopify or Amazon as an example, the merchant will be able to. Uh, connect with the platform, uh, anonymize the, uh, the data, because that's also a, a important part, and make them available for, for purchase. They will put a price on it, so for how much he's willing to sell them. And with the use of the blockchain technology, that's going to be actually a peer-to-peer -peer exchange where only the user, the data owner, will have a control over the uh, tokens for the files, and that's how the trade will going to look like. That directly, the data owner will be selling this data to the uh, person who is uh, in need of data. Uh, that's going to be, uh, like I said, anonymized, uh, uh, automated by the plugins, so quite easy to uh, to do for those, uh, in example, e-commerce merchants from the platform which they operate. And then on the platform, uh, there will be uh, developers who can purchase the data and use it uh, uh, against the application which uh, are developed by them. Those applications will be uh, delivering information for the, for the business and they will be sold back to the businesses. And the whole trade on the platform will be made with the usage of the Repux tokens. So the merchant will be rewarded with the Repux tokens and the developer will be uh, buying with the uh, Repux tokens as well. Okay, understood. And is is this uh, a system that is already operational and functional, or is it uh, is it in beta, or where where would you say it is in development? Uh, the system is available. If uh, anyone of uh, of the podcast listener will go to uh, Repux.io page, uh, you will find a link uh, which is called Marketplace. After the registration, you can put the files on sale or you can uh, purchase the uh, device which will be placed over there. So this is a working product as of now. The thing which we are, uh, which will be working um, after the token sale is to expand the uh, integration and expand the 
mechanism behind the data anonymization, data segmentation, because this is very crucial for the uh, for the trade itself. That the, the, the privacy concerns is there, so we need to take care about this. And the data sets needs to be uh, clean and accurate in order to be useful for machine learning purposes or AI, uh, AI purposes, right? So those things will be uh, will be a focus point for us on a later stage. Okay, very good. And so, uh, when when has when did this project start? Uh, the project uh, started in November 2017. We we started on the, uh, the the website and the uh, and the ICO uh, activity. Uh, so we were we, at this, at currently we are uh, doing two things at the same time. One is the ICO and one is the marketplace development. Okay, uh, so it's uh, fairly new, and you've got some uh, some operational uh, parts of it already working. Uh, what do you what, what kind of challenges or difficulties have you faced uh, in the last few months as you were building this? I would say that the the whole blockchain is um, is a challenge because this thing is relatively new for the usage. So that that's uh, that's the thing which we uh, needed to to uh, figure out in order to make uh, this marketplace thing possible. Uh, the convincing of the people about about introducing the idea. That was also uh, a bit of challenging because this approach is relatively new on the market. There is no uh, proven examples of other projects which are successful in this space. So it's always more challenging and more difficult to explain something which is uh, which is new on the market because the understanding of it is a bit uh, smaller. So this this blockchain development part was uh, kind of challenging. We already managed that and, and we are uh, we are handling it properly right now. And this explanation introducing project uh, makes, in, in some cases, uh, we were at the conference in Santa Clara, and, and some discussion from, from this uh, blockchain conference were, were really surprising because people, some of the people were uh, a bit confused at the very beginning of the introducing the idea. Uh, after a few minutes of conversation, they were really surprised about this uh, idea of making uh, Data, raw data from small businesses available uh, for the for the machine learning purposes. That was something which they were uh, really positively surprised about it. So, but the, like I said, the beginning, the introduction, the, the explanation of the idea. That's something which we are, uh, which we were struggling a bit at the very beginning. Okay. Yeah, I understand. And you know, part of that, uh, part of the issues that all companies are facing right now in developing a blockchain is. Uh, you know, it's it's innovating and changing so fast uh, that it's really hard exactly. for people to keep up. And there are so many right. different use cases and so many different applications. It's uh, it it gets confusing. And so, uh, you know, as you're, you know, that that will eventually settle out. Uh, let me ask you this. You know, as we're about to wrap up here in a minute, what what do you see as the future of uh, the data marketplace, you know, let's say in the next 12 months to five years, where do you see blockchain technology integrating in, in the way that uh, that you're pioneering right now? I wouldn't say that 12 months is going to be there, but definitely a few years, that's that's the period when I strongly believe that, that blockchain will be uh, Will be something in the size of Internet 20 years back, right? It's it's not it's not going to take another 20 years to to make this technology flourish. I I think it's going to be far more shorter because it's really uh, revolutionary and this whole idea behind it is is really empowering um, individuals. I would say in the sense of people and and enterprises, and it puts some uh, common ground. Uh, and then rebuilds the, the competition on the market. Uh, so if you use it properly, that, that makes works in favor uh, for you. In, in our case, we believe that uh, this technology, this blockchain technology will empower those SMEs and, and that gives them a chance to, to strive on the market because uh, you can notice that, that 
they have they are a, a, a little pushed back as of now because this internet uh, works in favor of, of, of bigger companies. And I see that blockchain is something which is uh, turning table a bit uh, as of now, and that may be a chance. I strongly believe that a few years from now, we will see a lot of uh, projects which are uh, successful with the usage of the blockchain and, and, and empowering, empowering individuals once again. Excellent. And uh, so right before we finish here, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, before you got into this project, um, what what were you doing before that? Sure. I, I would limit myself just to last uh, uh, six years, actually. My last 10 years is uh, strongly in SaaS businesses. When I was uh, taking care of the marketing, sales, product development, uh, but the six last years is strongly uh, experience related to e-commerce. I was building uh, one of the biggest uh, e-commerce platform in Poland. And, and that's the place when I uh, get in touch with those uh, uh, small companies, right? So when I get to this um, blockchain industry, that was a, a, a really shock, like how it works and what abilities it gives you. So. Yeah, I guess that this SaaS uh, experience of mine will be really helpful in order to utilize blockchain properly. Well, I really appreciate you coming on here and joining us, uh, Tomas uh, Taiban from Repux. And uh, tell us the website uh, one more time where uh, people can learn more about this. Uh, the, the website is uh, repux.io. There you can find the information about the project. Uh, you can find information about the uh, running token sales. There you can find information about the working product marketplace. All of that is in, in links on the website. And from there, you can go to those places and check the product uh, itself and see how it works. Very good. Thanks very much for joining us. Repux.io. R-E-P-U-X dot I-O. Uh, we'll see you next time here on the Future Tech Podcast. Thanks, John. The Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Blockchain Super Conference is coming to Dallas, Texas, February 16, 17, and 18 in 2018. If you know of a better way to get the latest insider knowledge about crypto, to hear directly from the top minds in this field, to interact personally with 800 fellow crypto lovers, hodlers, investors, miners, traders, developers, and founders, then I'd like to hear about it. If you don't, then you don't want to miss out. Register today for the Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Blockchain Super Conference. Go to BitcoinSuperConference.com and register today as a super early bird to get the lowest rates on tickets and hotel rooms. That's BitcoinSuperConference.com. You have been listening to Almost Here, Around the Corner Future Technology Podcast with Richard Jacobs. Subscribe to this podcast, post to review, to discover more future technologies that are poised to transform our lives for better or worse, such as Bitcoin, artificial intelligence, 3D printing, blockchain, virtual reality, and more.